So with rumors for the new iMac Pro featuring the M1 Pro and M1 Max chip starting to heat up, let's take a look at its release date as well as what it could release with and whether or not it's actually even worth buying. Before we get started, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show. Okay, kicking it off, the rumors seem to be suggesting that the iMac Pro, whether or not that's actually what it ends up being called, is set to release at an event in March. But let's actually talk about what it could release with. And you may not think that's important, but here's why it's key. If they're just releasing the iMac Pro, there's only a small amount of people who are actually even interested in something like that. So why dedicate their spring event, basically, for that one device? Typically, they would need two, three, maybe even more devices to announce with it to make it worth having a whole event. Otherwise, it just may be announced in a press release. So taking a look at some of the devices that could come out with it, we know it's not iPhone that just came out, Apple Watch just came out, even something new like the Apple Glass. Uh, the Apple Glass is much like the Apple Watch and that was announced in September on September 14th, 2017 with the iPhone 6. So I would think that the Apple Glasses or Apple Glass, whatever they end up calling it, is going to also be announced alongside the iPhone. So then we have a couple of other candidates, the stronger ones and that's the macbook air the mac mini and also the ipad air 4. so we're going to throw out the macbook air one because there aren't a lot of rumors supporting an early 2022 release and two that would be coming with something like the m2 chip and not even all of these devices are currently on m1 so i would imagine they would do that before announcing the m2 chip now getting into something a little bit more likely perhaps the ipad air 4 could make an appearance uh the last time we saw this was in october of 2020 and the iPad Air 3 came out only a year before so if they want to stay around that year refresh cycle you know 12 to 15 months then they would want to get this iPad Air out as soon as possible and we could potentially see that with the A15 chip that we just saw in the iPhone 13 maybe an A15X something like that uh, that would boost the performance uh, while not just moving it on to M1 as is only reserved right now in terms of iPad for the M1 iPad Pro and then another candidate for this March event my personal favorite the Mac mini or what may be called the mac mini pro and if that ends up having the same chips as the imac we're going to get into whether or not it would actually be worth buying the new imac pro depending on the price and how those things shake out i think those are some really good candidates for what we might see announced alongside an imac pro in order to give it an actual full event come march 2022 but from there let's get into the most exciting juiciest part of this video thanks for watching thus far by the way and that's going to be the imac pro features so let's start off light i think we're going to get 27 and 32 inch flavors just like we got with the macbook pros 14 and 16 inch for those m1 pro and m1 max chips some people need more space some people don't um, i would also assume that these displays are going to be 120 hertz refresh rate mini led hdr displays like we've seen apple already do at such an amazing level with the M1 iPad Pro as well as the new MacBook Pros and originally with the XDR display so that's pretty much a shoe in but I would also expect to see the return of all the ports that we saw on the MacBook Pros 14 and 16 inch the return of the SD card reader maybe a couple more USB-C Thunderbolt ports and maybe even an HDMI I mean the iMac is all about that display and it's going to be hard to pair up the iMac with anything other than an XDR display and depending on what new technologies they developed that might not even um, match up well with the new iMac but we could see an HDMI display port on there as well now as far as aesthetics it is a pro model so I'm only expecting to see two color variants and that'll be space gray and silver maybe a black or a brown if they wanted to spice it up but I doubt that um, and then we'll also see a nearly borderless display potentially with a notch because Apple is all about making those silhouettes stand out so that you know you're looking at an iPhone or a Mac or an Apple Watch just by the silhouette of it. Um, that's part of the reason why they kept the chin in the, the consumer level super bright color palette uh, iMac that we just saw released last year. I think they could do something very similar, but it would not only distinguish it as an iMac, but the iMac Pro if it had that notch. So I do expect for us to see a notch as well. 
I think this could also be the first Mac to come with Face ID. You know, the iMac is one of those computers that is always staring at you. Um, they have the technology to embed this in the display. I think it might be worth it to do that. But once again, more of the issue comes in with authenticating those face scans. Like if you're shopping online, it's always looking at you. How does it know that you want to look at it? Do you wink at it or do you, I don't know, maybe say a command or something, but it would have to be something that doesn't make it more actual tasks than just putting your finger on a fingerprint reader. I think that's really been holding back the face ID on the Macs, not that they can't actually put the technology in there. I also think with Apple's continued focus on AR, this is something we'll likely see this year in all the new Macs. Then finally, in terms of features, a couple of small things, we'll probably see the return of the MagSafe connector we saw on the 2021 iMac, and then also the ethernet cable right in the power adapter. But from there, let's talk about what this thing could cost. It could vary very widely. Um, the iMac Pro last time we saw it brand new was $4,999, coming in at 5,000 bucks, right? But if it has the same M1 Pro and M1 Max chips, it is a desktop, it's not portable. So if it has the same chips, I could see it coming in at $15, $16.99, more than the $12.99 iMac, but not as much as a computer that's a laptop with the same chips in it at $19.99. Now, I highly doubt this. I think they're going to do dual M1 Pro and dual M1 Max chips, um, and I think that's gonna boost it up past the $24.99 starting range. While at the same time, I do think Apple saved a lot of money by making and manufacturing their own chips, and we could see a price cut like we have with the other M1 devices because of that. If it has those dual M1 Pro and M1 Max chips, we could see it come in at maybe $3499, $3500. That's just a guess. Maybe they could shave a thousand or fifteen hundred bucks off. That would be great. But if they don't, that is when the Mac Mini starts to look a little bit more attractive. Of course, you can't beat 120 hertz refresh rate mini LED HDR display. I mean, the thing is going to look gorgeous, but if you're not editing and creating an HDR and you don't use a lot of high refresh rate content, a regular 4K display will probably do you pretty well. And if the Mac Mini has those M1 Pro, M1 Max dual chips in it, I think the Mac Mini would be a much better value, and I think this could start anywhere from $12.99 like the iMac M1 um, to maybe $16.99 if it has those dual chips in it. And that's part of the reason why I think Apple's not going to put the dual chips in it because it would cannibalize the iMac, especially if it comes out in the same event. Now regarding the Mac Mini, we last saw this release in the M1 flavor in 2020 back in November. So it's been over a year, and if they wanted to do a two-year refresh cycle, moving the Mac Mini onto uh, the M2 chip along with the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro 13 inch, that may be discontinued. Um, they'd have to get it moving pretty soon to get out the uh, M1 Pro, M1 Max version of the Mac Mini. And so it would line up perfectly to come out in March, but I think that also means that they're gonna take away that dual M1 Pro, M1 Max chip option in order for it not to just be clearly a better option than the iMac. A lot of people will be dazzled by the display, but for people who just want the raw power, if they already have a 4K display, um, maybe they'll skip on the display in the iMac and just go for that power in the Mac Mini. But of course, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this new iMac. Any features that I missed or that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below and that Mac Mini's gonna look pretty good if it comes out the way I think it will in March. So guys, hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granny Geek Show.